Well, good morning, folks. Very, very cold this morning, although we're into the first week of April. We had a minus one, minus two last night. And uh, I've been down to the allotment greenhouse already. And I'm just going to go down now and show you. Luckily, last night, I spotted the temperature potentially low, so I've just taken the fleece off the onions, and them are okay. I've still got the brassicas covered up here, although they'll probably stand a bit of cold. But it's actually clobbered my leeks, you can see they've gone flat, but hopefully they'll pick up once I get the sun on them. And I've also found a couple of large candles. I think we've got another low temperature forecast for tonight, so I'm going to be popping them on. The main plan for this week is to try and get all the beds ready for planting out. Although for the next hour or so, I'm popping back into the greenhouse until it warms up. <laughs> I'd just like to show you this little device here. It's a wireless thermometer. It also measures relative humidity and dew point. But it's the wireless thermometer, which is the main interest for me. It connects via an app on your phone where you can set alerts for the high or low temperatures. And for me, I set a low temperature. When that reaches five degrees in the greenhouse, it'll send a message to my phone, and then I'm able to switch the heating on, either the propagators or the diesel heater with the remote controls. Although it's still a bit of cold out here, I'm warmed up now, I've had the old erdy gurdy out, topping the tanks up. I put like compost and that in the bottom, the old horseman awesome used right the way down, but as I've got higher, I've used the old spent potato compost, and I'll actually put a bag of fresh compost sifted through the sieve here, and uh, that's more or less these done. There is one modification that I want to do in all, and just grab a pipe here. As you know, I built these hoop houses for the carrot tanks last year, and they did very well. I just slot into these holes here. But I found, as I put the four hoops in, as I tensioned the net, it actually pulls these in like that, which was a, a bit of a problem, really. And at a couple of occasions, they actually popped out. So what I'm doing is a slight modification. I've got a wooden bar that goes straight across. And rather than screw it in permanently, I'm actually putting some saddle clips on. So I'm going to build that, and I'll bring you back when I've finished. There we have it finished. These are just normal plastic saddle clamps, I think they're called. Obviously, make sure to get the right size for your pipe, the MDPE pipe that you're using. And uh, there's four there equally spaced. And just like magic, this is how it fits. In position, as you can see, that there is really firm now. No chance of these pulling together. The thing that I like about this, say I didn't want to actually screw through, is that it's totally dismantleable. You can take this out, group all these pipes together and they store nicely underneath here. There's one little modification I'll do, I might just chop, shorten the length of the wood so it doesn't hang, overhang the pipe so much and snag on the net. But apart from that, I'm very happy with it. Now we've got the carrot tank sorted, we move on to the garlic and this ain't going to take long. Just a few little surface weeds come out. There's a poppy in here. <laughs> we did, during that spell of the snow and that we had it, we lost about four plants. But apart from that, everything looks fine. So I'll just take these out. I might actually give it a little feed for some chicken manure pellets. And then that's another one put to bed. That's all the weeding done. Didn't take too long, did it? Uh, this little wolf tool with the short handle is the ideal job for this. And another benefit here is the planting in rows. You can get the how between the plants without risk of damage. Right, now that's all tidied up. As I said, I'm going to give this a little top dressing of chicken manure, put the cover back on, and that's another one done. 
Well, these four tanks, there's little or nothing needs doing to them. The first two ends with the grids on, you may remember, these are the belated planted elephant garlic, which I completely forgot to sow in the autumn. And on this side here, I've just topped the tanks up. And I'm going to probably leave them and put bedding plants or something, some flowers or something, just a bit of colour. And possibly I might put my sweet peas along this edge. So that's all that's left now is to have a look at the old veggie pod. With the veggie pod, this has definitely earned its keep. As you can see, I've still got a good crop of lettuce. And I'm not going to just pull them out for the sake of it. What I'll do, I'll keep my eye on them, and any I can see going to seed or starting to belt, I'll then harvest them. I've actually had two out today. But what I will do, because this side is fairly empty, I'm going to take these out. This one's here. It's the old basket of fire. I'm going to clean half of it. And what I intend to do is take quite a lot of soil out of here and replace it with a fresh bag of compost. People who got these veg pods sometimes forget that this soil needs constantly feeding because it's reproducing plants all the time. So uh, first of all, I'm going to have a clear up this half, dig some soil out, and then we'll put a fresh bag in. Right, I've dug all this out. It's a fair old chunk to come out of. Surprising, really. I've given it a dressing with uh, chicken pellets and also blood fish and bone. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a bag of Bathgate multi-purpose. I'm going to put half of it in here and mix some of the owl compost in and put the other half in when I eventually empty this out. This is what I fetched out and this is a 90 litre barrow. And I've put some blood fish and bone and chicken pellets in here. And I say, I'll revitalise the bath gate and all, mix the old lot up. And any surplus, I'm going to put this on the bean bed down the bottom. In my last video, somebody left a comment asking about the bath gate that I was using. And if I'd run it through a sieve at all. It was uh, exactly how it comes out the bag. I'll just show you. I just pop that away, just chip some out. You can come down there and have a look at this. So you, you get lumps in like this, but this is where it's just been compressed, where it's been stacked. Rub it in your hands. As you can see, that's pretty good stuff. Well, now there's feed already in this compost, the bathgate stuff, and we adding blood fish and bone and so I'm going to mix this together with the spoils of what I've just removed. That has topped up quite nicely, as you can see, right up to the rim. And now I'll probably start planting out that. I've already got some spring onions ready to go in. And in the meantime, we'll keep out on these lettuce and pick them as required. I can't believe we've had the four seasons in one day. I've had to pop a little hoodie on. Now I've got this side of the veggie pod done. I've got some spring onions here to plant out. These ones are called Apache. And these ones are called Ramrod. So I'm just going to pop these in now. So that's the spring onions put in now. Before we finish this one, the cover on the veggie pod is a great protection against flying insects and that. But there's one extra thing I'll give, and that's using petroleum jelly. Just put a nice little smear just around each leg. And that then 
deters any slugs and snails trying to find a way. So that's the first planting in the veggie pot for this season. We're keeping the rain cover on just for a few more days because we have some cold nights and this does give a bit of extra protection. If you'd like to see how I built the veggie pod and including adding a wicking system to it, I'll put a link to a video up here. That's about it for this one. Many thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.